Okay. Um, I'm a little bit afraid some of you may be having trouble with the homework. So I wanted to give you an example problem. So here we are at the uh, simulation I gave you right here on this website. And I'm going to go down. And you were asked to determine an unknown uh, molar extinction coefficient and an unknown concentration. I'm not going to do those exact problems. I'll do something very similar, though. I'm going to determine an unknown cuvette width, which it would be very peculiar if you didn't know what your cuvette width was. But all the same, I'm going to do that. So now, every time I click this, it generates a new random problem, which has a different answer. So I'm going to just, you know, end up on one, and one of the first things I need to do, though, is to calibrate my sensor. So every spectrophotometer needs to be calibrated, and what you want is when there is no light to go through, there should be zero transmittance, and when there is no dye in your sample, it should be 100% transmittance. So the first thing we should do is take out the dye. So that is the signal that we get with no dye in there, and it's reading 130%, which is not right. So we're going to want to lower that. We can do that by clicking here and adjusting the power to the light. We can adjust the wavelength of the light. So I'm going to adjust the power until it's 100%. Transmittance. There. So now we've calibrated our spectrophotometer. So, uh, we want to add sample back in, and I just happen to choose the right concentration, but if I choose too little, <clears throat> then too much light makes it through, or I mean, yeah, too much, I'm sorry, I, I added too much sample, not enough light makes it through, so there's a very weak s signal of light going through. If I add too little of the dye, then too much of the sample makes it th of the light makes it through, and in both cases you can lose important information. So we want it someplace in the middle, which is actually right there. I told you that this is the maximum molar extinction coefficient in the visible spectrum, which means that I've got to put this on the peak. So I'm going to put that right on the peak there. And now we need to determine um, the absorbance. And this is measuring the absorbance constantly. It is 8 point something. You see there's a lot of noise in that measurement, which is typical for you know, a lot of measuring devices. You'll have a good deal of noise. And we talked about how to uh, get rid of this with uh, something like a moving average window. But in this case, you know, the signal doesn't change. So I'm just going to collect data. You can actually do it without doing this. if you good at estimating, but this would be a much more uh, rigorous way of determining your average. So I think I've collected enough data. I'm going to just pause it and get that data. So I've got it. I've got it pulled up over here. I'm going to go Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and I'm going to paste it into Excel over here. So. There it is. I want the average absorbent. So I'm going to say equal average. Then I'm going to select these cells. So I'm going to select all the absorbent cells. There. Now let's go back to our equations. So we know absorbance equals the width times the concentration times the molar extinction coefficient. We've got the absorbance. We know the concentration because we put that in our cells. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 5. And we know the molar extinction coefficient. We're given that. It's 3.96 times 10 to the 4. And that's in uh, 1 over molar over centimeters. And this is in molar. So if we want the width, it's going to equal the absorbance divided by the concentration divided by the molar extinction coefficient, which gives us 2.19 centimeters. So I'm going to go back here, put in 2.19 centimeters, and submit, and hopefully I'm right. And I'm right enough. It was The right answer was 2.2, .2. I had 2.19 within the air.
So I got it right. If I did get it wrong, I could look over here and use these constants to determine what I might have uh, gotten wrong. Or I could try again. You're free to try again as many times as you like. Once you get it right, then you got 100% on the assignment. That's it. Uh, please, if you have any questions, come talk to me, please.